हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू अनदर सीरीज ऑफ माइंड मैप टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज क्लाइमेट चेंज कॉन्फ्रेंसिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल हैव अ लुक एट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द टॉपिक देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट पेरिस एग्रीमेंट ट्वेंटी फिफ्टीन कॉप ट्वेंटी वन पेरिस एग्रीमेंट एनफोर्समेंट कंडीशन कॉप ट्वेंटी सिक्स ग्लास गो ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन आउटकम्स इंडिया कमिटमेंट्स ऑन कॉप ट्वेंटी सिक्स शर्मेल शेख कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉप ट्वेंटी सेवन आउटकम्स एंड वे फॉरवर्ड First of all let's have a look at a brief introduction of the topic we have discussed earth summit and kyoto protocol earlier let's discuss further three mechanisms are the outcome of cop 16 kansan summit 2010 technology mechanism within the un climate change process countries has confirmed the importance of enhancing technology development and transfer to developing countries to facilitate this the conference of the parties established the technology mechanism Green Climate Fund or GCF it is a dedicated financing vehicle for developing countries within the global climate architecture serving the financial mechanism of the UNFCCC World Bank is the trustee for Green Climate Fund and Adaptation Fund it was established to finance concrete adaptation projects in developing countries this was financed from the share 2% of proceeds on clean development mechanism Now let's discuss about Paris Agreement 2015 COP21. At COP21 in Paris on 12 December 2015, parties to the UNFCCC reached a landmark agreement to combat climate change. It was to accelerate and intensify the actions and investments needed for a sustainable low carbon future. The Paris Agreement builds upon the convention and for the first time brings all nations into a common cause to undertake ambitious efforts. The Paris Agreement's central aim is to keep a global temperature rise this century well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. It emphasizes to pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase even further to 1.5 degrees Celsius. The Paris Agreement requires all parties to put forward their best efforts through nationally determined contributions or NDCs. This includes requirements that all parties report regularly on their emissions and on their implementation efforts. There will also be a global stock take every 5 years to assess the collective progress towards achieving the purpose of the agreement. A global stock take to take place in 2023 and every 5 years thereafter. it will assess collective progress towards achieving the purpose of the agreement in a comprehensive and facilitative manner now let's have a look at the paris agreement enforcement conditions the paris agreement opened for signature on 22nd april 2016 earth day at un headquarters in new york it entered into force on 4 november 2016 30 days after so called double threshold had been met Double threshold meant the ratification by 55 countries that account for at least 55% of global emissions. 194 parties out of 198 parties to the convention are the parties to the Paris Agreement. Now moving on to COP26 Glasgow 2021 outcomes. COP26 was held in Glasgow United Kingdom in December 2021. The two headline outcomes from COP26 were the signing of the Glasgow Climate Pact and agreeing the Paris Rule Book. The Glasgow Climate Pact is a series of decisions and resolutions that build on the Paris Accord, setting out what needs to be done to tackle climate change. However, it doesn't stipulate what each country must do and it is not legally binding. The Paris Rule Book gives the guidelines on how the Paris Agreement is delivered. A focus of COP26 was to secure agreement between all the Paris signatories on how they could set out their nationally determined contributions to reduce emissions. Now let's discuss about India's commitments at COP26. The government of India has articulated and put across the concerns of developing countries at COP26. India presented the following five nectar elements that is panchamrit of India's climate action. reach 500 gigawatt non fossil energy capacity by 2030 50% of its energy requirements from renewable energy by 2030 reduction of total projected carbon emissions by 1 billion tons from now to 2030 reduction of the carbon intensity of the economy by 45% by 2030 over 2005 levels 
and achieving the target of net zero emissions by 2070. And now Sharmeer Sheikh conference that is COP27 outcomes the COP27 climate summit in Sharmeer Sheikh Egypt concluded with a historic breakthrough to help vulnerable countries it created a specific fund for loss and damage loss and damage refers to impacts of climate change that cannot be avoided either by mitigation or adaptation unlike the breakthrough on loss and damage the progress on adaptation fell far short of what's needed to address accelerating and severe impacts climate finance took center stage in negotiations this year the cop 27 decisions reflects developing countries serious concern that developed countries commitment to provide 100 billion dollars annually has still not been met countries at cop 27 agreed to outcomes that reflected only modest incremental progress on reducing emissions even though there is a clear emissions gap between current national climate plans and what needed to limit temperature rise to 1.5 degrees celsius cop 28 will be held in dubai united arab emirates or uae now lastly let's move on to the way forward climate change is the greatest environmental challenge the world has ever faced ipcc report said human induced warming reached approximately 1 degree celsius above pre industrial levels in 2017 World is facing extreme events like floods, cyclones, storms, etc. due to climate change. Global leader countries should take firm and dedicated actions to curb carbon emissions. According to the World Bank, climate change could push more than 100 million people into extreme poverty by 2030 by disrupting agriculture and fueling the spread of malaria and other diseases. Therefore, implementing global and individual countries' efforts under the Paris Agreement is the urgent need of time. We are the last generation that can stop devastating climate change. Now it's time for the practice questions. First of all, note down the prelims question that was asked in 2014 exam also. The scientific view is that the increase in global temperature should not exceed 2 degree Celsius above pre-industrial level. If it does, what can be its possible impact or impacts on the world? One terrestrial biosphere tends toward a net carbon source. Two widespread coral mortality will occur. Three all the global wetlands will permanently disappear. Four cultivation of cereals will not be possible anywhere in the world. Select the correct answer using the code given below. One only, one and two only, two, three and four only, or one, two, three and four. Now it's time for the mains question. It was asked in 2021 exam also. Describe the major outcomes of the 26th session of the Conference of the Parties that is COP26 to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change or UNFCCC. What are the commitments made by India in this conference? So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.